Hey everyone, it's Cooking with Anto. So this recipe is an Italian recipe. It's called rice balls or um, arancini and traditionally made as an appetizer. Um, you can make them big, you can make them small, you can make them medium size and uh, traditionally also stuffed with cheese in the middle. But I like mine. If you're from New York, you'll know that any pizzeria serves it with beef um, chopped meat and peas in the middle and that's the way I've just grown accustomed to eating them you know in Italy they make them with cheese in the middle um, so I had a craving for them because I recently traveled out of state and I went to a pizzeria because I was hungry and I saw rice balls and I thought oh my god I'm buying it I haven't had it in I don't know six seven years and I cut into it and I was so disappointed I don't know where they learned how to make a rice ball but this was a huge bowl of rice with like tiny pieces of meat mixed with the rice and like seven peas. And the bowl was the size of a softball. And it's like, what is this? This is, I was depressed. So I told my husband, when we get home, I'm making rice balls because I'm very depressed and I want my $4.75 back because this is not a rice ball. Hello. Um, it wasn't from New York. I should have known better. Anyway, these are really quick to make and the the good thing about this is that you can make them ahead of time. So if you want to have them as an appetizer for a party, you can make them ahead of time and freeze them. Um, I'll explain how to do that uh, while you watch the video. And, um, you know, it's really it's really easy. It's, it, because I make the rice, the, the arboreal rice, which is a risotto, is very, very labor intensive. But if I'm making rice bowls, I'm not going through the trouble of going the intensive route. So what I decided to do is I made it in the oven, the risotto. And it, it cuts um, your work time in half. Anyway, you'll see it throughout the video. So yeah, rice balls it is for this video. And um, I hope you guys like it. Continue to share my channel and the videos and leave comments and feedback. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching as always. Bye. So here you're going to see the beef stock going into the risotto. What you don't see in the video is I also include a white wine into this mixture. I just forgot to record it. So once I stopped recording, I added the white wine in afterwards. So that's gonna go into the oven, 350 degrees for about 45 minutes or until all of the stock has been absorbed, okay? So while that's in the oven, you're just gonna be patient, you're gonna wait. Now you see how all the liquid has been absorbed right here? We're gonna add in our grated cheese and our pepper. I did not include salt because the stock is already salty and the grated cheese is already salty as well. You're going to incorporate it until it's all mixed up. This is going to sit in the refrigerator for about two to three hours, preferably overnight, for it to get hard. However, before that step, you need to add in a binder. So you're going to cool off the rice a little bit, and then you're going to add in your eggs to bind everything together. You want your rice to be a little bit warm so it cooks some of the eggs, right? But you don't want the rice to be hot because then you're going to have scrambled eggs inside of your rice, and that's just disgusting. So you're just going to incorporate it really well, and then now you're going to throw it into the fridge. I would say three hours minimum, overnight preferred. So while that's cooling off, you're going to do um, your beef filling, okay? So it's going to be just beef and peas. Um, sauteing some garlic and onions right now. And um, I use a store-bought sauce for this because I don't want to go through the process of making a homemade sauce for this kind of recipe, um, where you're not really going to taste the difference. So I'm seasoning my beef. Of course, as always, the um, ingredients and the amounts is always at the bottom of the video. If you click the down arrow, you'll see everything that you need. So I just put in some onion, garlic, salt, pepper, oregano, you know, the basics to make it taste Italian. Um, so you're going to want to brown the beef and um, you're going to want to cook it fully through and I would say, uh, I don't know, that takes about five to seven minutes. I used uh, a pound of, oh, I'm sorry, a half a pound of 85.15 ground beef. All right, so um, you're just going to keep browning it up until it's fully cooked through. And um, I don't bother straining it because uh, that fat that you see at the bottom is from the olive oil and not from the beef. Okay, so I'm putting in my store-bought sauce. I know, I know, I know. But I'm not making a sauce from scratch for rice bowls. I'm going to admit it just makes this recipe so much easier, just like I decide to do the risotto in the oven. You know, if I was serving a risotto with um, shrimp, I would go the labor-intensive route and do it with the stock, the ladling, the mixing and mixing and mixing. But this is rice bowls. You want them to be a little sticky anyhow. So what you're going to do is next, you're going to put in your green peas. I bought canned peas 
They're the normal size peas, not baby sized, and um, they're young and tender. I didn't get the small peas because they're going to break apart. They're too tiny for this recipe. You want them to remain whole. And um, this is just the way that, you know, rice bowls are made in New York at pizzerias. Typically, traditionally, it's stuffed with um, cheese and it's not made with beef. But I'm telling you, either way, it tastes delicious. So you're going to let this sit on the oven for about 15 minutes to simmer. Okay. So now that the rice has completely cooled off and had a time to get hard, you're going to get a I would say, I don't know, half-sized baseball amount of rice and put it in your hand like you see me doing. And then you're going to put a hole in the middle with your fingers, use your knuckles, whatever. But you see how I made that hole? It's like a little well. <clears throat> and then I take about two tablespoons amount of filling and I, I kind of mush it in there far down deep into the rice. And then I slowly push the meat in with my thumb and then I slowly work the rice. And this is why it's so important to make sure your rice is cold because if you do this when it's warm it's going to break don't rush the recipe let it cool off i would say like three hours would be a minimum overnight preferred but you know not everyone has that time to wait overnight so you just work the rice over the beef and then you pat it down real tight and that's it i'm going to show you how to do it one more time so um when i'm serving this as an appetizer obviously i'm going much smaller than this size I'm going a little bit bigger than a golf ball. But since I'm eating this as dinner um, with a side salad, I've decided to bring them up a little bigger in size. So again, you make the little center in the middle, like a little well, and then you take two tablespoons of the filling and you just press the meat in there. And then you slowly work the rice over the meat. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm wearing gloves because um, it's a really messy job. And if you did it with your hands, ugh, it's just, I don't know. I don't like the feeling of all of that mush all over my hands. So I'm wearing gloves. So this is what you're going to do next. You're going to coat them. Okay. Um, it's just one layer of coating and uh, you're not, you know, cause these come out crispy enough. So you're going to put it in your flour first and then you're going to put it in your egg. Again, I'm wearing gloves. I always wear gloves. Um, I started always wearing gloves when I'm coating things with egg and flour and, and, um, breadcrumbs because I hate having my hands feel you know full of breadcrumbs and you have to rinse them oh it's just too much work I'm trying to cut down my work time in the kitchen you know and still make delicious food so as you can see here I'm patting the eggs around the bowl and then I'm putting it into the breadcrumbs and that's it simple that's how you coat them it's not really difficult you just continue doing that until all your rice balls are uh, coated um, you can put them in the refrigerator for like 10 minutes after you do this just to get them um, hardened up a little bit it's not truly a uh, necessary but um, I did that this time around because I was just afraid of them um, breaking during the frying process. Okay, while you're doing this, get your oil nice and hot to a deep fry um, setting. Okay, so that's it. You see, nice and coated, ready to fry. So 375 degrees I have my oil at. I would do it at around 360 because on the bottom of these, they got pretty dark because the oil was up too hot. So of course, you're going to turn these because they're not going to flip on their own. So once you see um, they're ready to be turned over, please do so. Now, this isn't the last step. Um, you can eat them right out of the oil this way if you like. Me, I like to serve mine cut in half with some mozzarella cheese on the top melted. Um, but as you, as you can see here, they're frying up pretty quickly. And I don't know why I continue recording myself frying this, but I'm just trying to talk as a filler right now. <laughs> I don't know why I left this long of a video for, for frying, whatever. So anyway, this is uh, when they're out of the fryer. Nice and crispy center. Everything is cooked up in the middle. But me, I like to cut them in half. This is how they serve them in pizzerias in New York as well. They cut them in half. They put like so much um, mozzarella cheese on the top. It's absolutely delicious. So you want to put it under the broiler for a few minutes. You know, it doesn't even take long. Okay, so this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. Absolutely delicious. You can see the cheese is nice and melted. Okay, and I'm taking a bite right now. And it was absolutely delicious because I'm recording my voice afterwards. And as you can see, the filling here, nice and saucy. You have your beef. You can see your peas inside. I mean, this is absolutely delicious. It works well. You make them smaller for an appetizer. That's what it looks like whole, that big ball up there. Um, you can make them for an appetizer, but you would make them half that size, if not smaller. Um, but again, this was a dinner, so I made them pretty big. My husband likes them whole. Um, so yeah, this is it. If you like the recipe, please share my videos. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.